guys, so today I'm back with another business related video. For anyone that's new, I run my own cake business. So today we're gonna to be going through the Safer Food Better Business for caterers. And I have my printed off version here. And then throughout, I'll be putting it on the screen and going through it in detail. I'm gonna be showing you all my answers, um, anything that I didn't fill out. Obviously, it's each to your own. If it's relevant to you, then fill it out. If it's not, then you don't have to. And yeah, I'm going to be going through it and telling you everything you need to know. Fingers crossed it is helpful. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So I'm going to put it up on the screen for you. And then I'm also going to take out mine so that I can see my answers. So hopefully you can see this. So this is the first page. It's just the logo page. You just fill out your business name, um, then your name. So the owner's name. Um, or whoever is the owner if it's not you and then the date of completion this doesn't have to be by a particular date as long as it's done by the date that your inspection is so I did mine on the 30th of September but I registered in June but I didn't know about this so I filled it out a little bit later then there's just some pages on how to use this pack um, so it's got that there are different packs available for different things so this is the caterers one then it's got a bit about the registering so it says, if you haven't already, you must register your food business with the environmental health team at your local council. This should have been done at least 28 days before you start operating. Um, if you have bought existing food business from someone else, you need to register as a new owner. I think this works the same if you change address. I think if you change address, you have to let them know. I'm not sure if you have to have a whole new inspection because obviously you might have a different kitchen space or you will. Um, so I think you might have to have another inspection if you move house, but yeah, um, so that's what I mentioned in one of my previous videos, try to register 28 days before, if you're already trading and you didn't know, like me, um, I was trading for two weeks after I registered, so I registered at the beginning of June and then I started mid-June, um, I told them that I was starting mid-June, um, so yeah, obviously I couldn't give 28 days notice, but they were fine about it. Um, but yeah, try and give as much notice as possible. Then there's just the review date and name. So you literally just sign date this pretty simple. So then there's how to use the diary. Um, so you fill in the date at the start of the week, each day, tick that you've completed opening and closing checks. Um, the management section isn't relevant for me. If it's relevant for you, then you need to fill it out. Um, so if you have any employees and then if something different happens, you need to make note of it. If anything goes wrong, you need to make note of it um, under the relevant day. And then you want to sign. And if you do any extra checks that you don't normally do, then write those in as well. I'll go through this in more detail with the actual diary. I haven't filled this out yet um, because the health officer that I had when she inspected, she said, I have my opening and closing checks laminated on the fridge. So I do those before I start my day and when I close out. Um, but she said, I don't need to keep a log. So that's why I don't fill out this diary. Um, but I would recommend maybe filling out one week for an example, and then you can ask your um, health officer if you need to be doing it, because like I say, every council is different. Then there's just some questions, um, so you can go through those and whatever is relevant. Um, they're just general things to do with why you need to be using this pack, um, why you need to keep daily records, temperature checks, stuff like that. Then there's a bit on copyright. This is just the basic information about hygiene ratings. So if you don't know, the hygiene ratings are zero to five. Five is very good, zero is very bad. Um, so yeah, you don't want to be getting zero, um, but four, some people get four and they're like upset about it. Um, but if you get a four, it's still good. Four or five, you want to kind of aim for. Um, so yes. And it says what your hygiene rating is based on, which obviously helps you get a good hygiene rating. So it's based on, um, the hygiene of handling food preparation, cooking, reheating, cooling and storage. So basically knowing all those things. So if you're baking, a lot of that won't be relevant. Um, it will be the cooking and the preparation. You won't be reheating anything, hopefully. Um, and the cooling of cakes is going to be different to um, other foods. And the storage is like how you label stuff. 
Um, and then there's cleanliness and condition of the kitchen, which I think plays a big part in it. Um, obviously, if you have pests and dirt just in your kitchen, then obviously it's not going to look very good. So I made sure that my kitchen was absolutely spotless. Um, so yeah, I wanted to leave a good impression. Um, and then the hygienic management of food safety. So this is your systems and checks. So it includes this booklet. So you want to make sure that um, you've filled it out. You can again ask your health officer before your inspection if you need it. Mine again said I didn't need it, but me being me, I wanted to fill it out just in case. I was worried that she might forget because we spoke a week before. I was like, what if she forgets that she's told me that I don't need one and then she asks for it and then it looks bad me saying no, I don't have it. So I thought I'll fill it out anyway and luckily for me, it only took about 15 minutes. So hopefully it's as quick for you as it is for me. Um, so yeah, it, it goes through the hygiene ratings there. Then it just says about the preparation before you start um, like touching any food. So wash your hands, clean clothes, wear an apron, um, tell your manager if you're sick, obviously if you don't have a manager then you need to be able to identify that yourself and make sure that um, you know whether you're ill or not. Um, no jewellery, hair tied back or in a hairnet and then there's just some checks that you shouldn't be doing like eating food or smoking, there's how to wash your hands, when to wash them, then it goes on to cross contamination. So. I'm gonna get my bits out now that we're onto the bits with answers. So I, I'm i just gonna tell you what I filled out for this page. I'm a cake baker, so obviously if this is um, different in terms of answers for you, then don't just copy what I've written. Um, but I'm just telling you my answers so that it might be helpful for fellow cake bakers. Um, but if you are in a different business, then you'll probably need to answer differently. But if you're in cakes, a lot of this will probably um, be relevant. So um, there's the safety point why. So obviously you're welcome to pause and read through these. But if you have looked at the pack, then you can also run through this and then run through my answers. So it basically um, says, are all staff trained to wash their hands before preparing foods? So I said yes, because I'm the only staff. Um, do you wear clean work clothes? Yes. Do your staff change clothes before starting work? I've put NA because um, I wear clean clothes to work and I don't have like staff coming in and out. I don't go in and out like when I'm baking. I get the baking done and then I change out of those clothes and like get rid of my apron and like put it in the washer. So yeah, everything is washed afterwards. So I put NA for that because I didn't think it was relevant for me. Then describe your staff's work clothes. So because I work from home, I'm not in like an industrial um, bakery or anything. I just put clean trousers slash jeans and a clean t-shirt. And then later on I go into all of the kind of PPE and like apron stuff like that. Um, then it's what type of aprons do you use? So I just put cotton, it's just got a logo on the front. Um, one of them's homemade and then the other one is um, like a custom like bought one with my logo printed. Um, so yeah, I just put cotton. It's because you can get plastic ones, um, like currently with the situation, like I have a part-time job in a care home and they have plastic aprons. So that's kind of what they're asking you. Is it one that is reusable and needs to be washed or is it disposable? Um, so yeah. And then which tasks do you use them for? So I put baking slash preparation. So when I'm mixing ingredients, then when I'm decorating, so actually icing, if I'm doing sprinkles and stuff, I don't. Um, and then I've put change if necessary, so if it's overly dirty, then I can get my other one out and put that one in the wash. Then, do you keep your hair tied back and do you wear hair nets? So I've put hair tied back and no hair nets. I thought about ordering them, but I wasn't told that they were essential and my hair's usually in a bun or in a plait. I don't leave it like down or in a ponytail because I worry that bits might come out and like my hair has a habit of molting, so I always put it in a bun or something that's a bit tighter so that it's out the way. Um, do you take off jewellery? So I have put um, yes, no jewellery or watches, and then are staff trained not to do these things, so it's not to smoke, drink or eat, chew gum while handling food, and then avoid touching your face or like coughing and sneezing all over the food, which you'd hope is also partly common sense. 
um so yeah you don't want to be coughing and sneezing all over food um so yeah i put the staff are trained for that being me um so we're on to the next page so it says do your food handlers understand the importance of being fit to work and what they need to report i've put yes they're literally yes and no for most of them so it's basically understanding that when you're ill you need to not work or if you have a manager then you need to tell them then do you check food handlers have been free of symptoms for 48 hours before returning to work yes being myself so i make sure that um if you've had vomiting and diarrhea and once those symptoms are then gone you need to wait two days before starting work um then we have where do staff change or store outdoor clothes na for me because i work from home do you keep clean uniforms slash disposable aprons where do you keep sorry and um, so i've put clean aprons are kept in the kitchen on the back of the door so literally just write down where you keep them then we have a bit of a bigger section here but i didn't write very much so it's got about cloths um and whether you use disposable ones how often you wash that kind of thing all the details you need to know um i put mine in the washing machine um, with clothes and every two weeks usually because they're stained from like food coloring i throw them out and get a new one if they're not stained then i just make sure that i'm washing them regularly um but yeah most of the time i throw them out and get a new one so i put i disinfect cloths with hot soapy water and then using bs british standards compliant disinfectant um and then every two weeks i either throw them out or um i make sure that they're washed regularly like every couple of days sort of thing so um different cloths for different jobs so there's different things that you should be using so like for example the dish cloth you shouldn't be drying your hands with it so um it's pretty much as simple as that so um it's do you do this so you just put yes or no so hot holding items um use tea towel or chef's cloth so i put yes um so like if i'm trying to get an oven tray out the oven i would take a tea towel and use that um washing up dishes use the dish cloth yes disposable cloths or paper towels wiping surfaces mopping up spills so i put um reusable cloths used for wiping surfaces without any spills because um yeah they're just being disinfected so i use a cloth and then mopping up spills i would wipe them with the cloth first the disposable one and then um you've got more disposable cloths so i've put wiping hands wiping sides of dishes before serving which i put na and then drying ingredients so i put yes for wiping hands and yes for drying ingredients and then down here we've got more of these um like how do you do it kind of ones so we've got um where do staff put dirty reusable cloths so placed in the sink for washing um so then like in the um, hand washing sink there's like two separate ones so i shove them in there and then i know to take them out and wash them and then where do you keep new clean cloths they are in the cleaning cupboard which is under the sink so i didn't print out this page because it wasn't relevant um so again you just don't print out any pages that aren't irrelevant that aren't relevant to you um so where do deliveries come um how do you make sure raw or ready to eat foods are stored um how do you where do you defrost foods um what controls do you have in place for raw and ready to eat foods so because this is more relating to like um it's got it in the photos but like meat and quiche um so something that needs to be cooked which is raw so the meat and then quiche is ready to eat um so yeah if you don't handle raw foods then this won't be relevant to you then this one i answered so it's about allergies um so it just says how do you prepare foods for allergic consumers so i put the orders are i can't read um orders that are for allergic customers are prepared on thoroughly cleaned surfaces and equipment um al allergen sensitive orders are the only order i prepare that day to avoid contamination with other bakes so if i have an order for like a nut allergy because i'm working from home i can't um like stop the contamination if i was doing other cakes 
So whenever I have a customer that is allergic, I always make sure that when I'm baking theirs, it's the only thing that is being baked. And then I make sure that it's all completely boxed up before I do something else. So if I do have another order that day, I'll cook it at a different time once I've cleaned everything. And I'll also make sure that the allergic order is the one I do first. So like um, at the beginning of my day, once I've already cleaned everything, then I'll bake that order, decorate, box it up put it in the fridge and because it's all boxed up and sealed then it's fine and I make sure that there's nothing else on the shelf which I do with any of my cakes I make sure that there's nothing on the shelf just to knock into it or contaminate it um so yeah you want to make sure that you have some kind of plan so yeah I make sure that I'm not baking anything else or preparing anything else at the same time that goes for like personal food as well so like if I was going to make lunch I wouldn't make it on the same surface and then get a cake out and not clean um so yeah i make sure that if i'm preparing personal food and also work food it's done at a different time to um allergen orders um how do you store foods once opened once opened these foods are stored in sealed bags or containers labeled with dates and allergens um in the fridge usually um if they need to go in the fridge if they don't then they don't um and then how do you prevent contamination from allergens in takeaway orders my orders don't include a mix of allergic and non-allergic items all orders will be suitable for the allergen so like if someone has a vegan order i do them all vegan i don't do like two vegan brownies and then two non-vegan and put them in the same box the whole order needs to be suitable for that so yes that's how i do that this is just some information on um so like eggs and then what um items would have this allergen in so it just gives you some examples to look through then we've got physical contamination and chemical contamination so it just says the safety point keep food covered and then to stop things falling in the food and then possibly that um disrupting the allergen um so like if a nut fell into something that was meant to be nut free for example so it just gives you the idea and then why so you can just read through those then this is just about covering foods and chemicals and pests um so yeah you can a lot of like these wordy bits you can read for yourself i just want to kind of show you my answers um then pests so where do you keep where when do you check for pests so i just put based at home check daily i said this to the health officer obviously my baking area is in my kitchen um it's in like an extension but it's part of the house it's not like an outside building so i would know if there's pests in there so that's why i put daily because i'm going to be going in the kitchen on a daily basis so i'll know if there's anything in there do you employ a pest control contractor and then i put when necessary um, how do you check deliveries? Most items are bought in person. When food is ordered for delivery, I check the outside and inside for damage. So like if there's a massive hole in the side of your box, then something might have eaten through it. So make sure you check all the bags of ingredients and etc. Um, how often do you check external areas? Um, bins are taken out daily and checked because they're household bins. So it's not like I'm not at the premises every day. So we take out the bins every day and yeah we check for any pests so it's just got the different types so there's flies rats mice cockroaches ants um birds and beetles and weevils didn't know what weevils were but um yeah i think that is all the information on those you can read about um where there would be signs of those particular ones. Um, then what to do if anything goes wrong, how to stop this from happening again. So there's just some kind of tips for you throughout the book, which is quite helpful. Then there's maintenance. So it's just details on um, maintenance that you will need to carry out. Um, so replacing chopping boards that are scratched because bacteria might be stored in them. Um, repairing or replacing equipment because if you've got something that's broken so say this has got an, a, an example of a spatula it might um, like parts of it might break off in food if it's already partly broken so 
it's just making sure that your equipment is like up to standard and like temperature probes you want to make sure that they're not um like old and maybe not working properly so make sure that they're um like sufficient quality they haven't been like kept for like 10 years and they no longer really work so you want to make sure that your items are of good quality um then i've put yes and then na on here so um checking your premises regular for damage um and recording any problems for maintenance so i said yes i do this and then na because there's no more details then we're on to cleaning so it's got about hand washing so i've put um do you use liquid soap yes do you use disposable towels yes disposable and standard hand towel wash weekly so we have an actual like hand towel and then um, which I use generally and then depending on what I'm doing so for instance like fondant I always use the actual disposable ones because sometimes towels can be a little bit fluffy so you obviously don't want like fluff um, on your gloves or on your hands when you're working with fondant so I always make sure I use disposable ones for those and then does it meet the anti-back soap um, British standards so I've put um, yes and then that's it um, obviously if it doesn't then just put what one you use then there's when to wash your hands which is kind of a repeat from earlier then there's cleaning effectively so I put uh, do you clean and disinfect using two stages yes so you clean with hot soapy water and a cloth um, wipe down surfaces or items and then I disinfect afterwards and leave it on for the necessary time. So different disinfectants require different amounts of time to be like activated. So leave that on and then wipe it again. Um, have your stuff been trained? I put NA because it's not relevant. Um, where do you keep information to confirm your standards? Your disinfectants meet standards. Um, information is labeled on bottles because it has the British standards number on the back which for anyone wondering, I'll put it on the screen as well, but it's BSEN1276 and BSEN13697. So there's two different ones, um, but a lot of the like um, own brand items are the most like compliant. Um, a lot of the like Dettols and things aren't, especially when they've got loads of flavouring. So a lot of the, obviously check the back of the bottle, but you'll find that if you go for a Tesco's own and check the back of that first, it's likely that it's compliant. Whereas you could be checking loads of the fragrance ones for ages and um, a lot of them aren't. I know Audi own is, um, I think it's called Astonish, which is what I use. Um, and then there's also Tesco's own, which is, there's quite a few different ones. So on to the next one. How often do you clean disinfect items people touch frequently, regularly, throughout the day, e.g. sinks, taps and door handles? Because of COVID, we wipe them a lot more. So like if anyone comes round, um, like any of my siblings come round, then we make sure to wipe anything down um, because that's like someone else coming in the house. Um, how often do you clean and disinfect fridges? Uh, weekly, which is on my cleaning schedule. Uh, do you have a dishwasher? Yes. Um, if not, do you have separate sinks for washing up raw and ready to eat equipment and utensils? Yes, I have a double sink. Um, you're meant to have a, or it's more common to have a separate sink for hand washing and washing up. If you don't, just make sure that your um, bathroom sink or toilet sink, whichever is downstairs, is accessible for them to view when you have your inspection. Um, because that will be where you wash your hands so they'll want to see where you wash your hands likely um, but yeah if you do have a double sink then you're fine um, so um, if you only have one sink do you clean and disinfect it including taps other fittings so I've put NA because I have a double sink then uh, have you completed the cleaning schedule from the diary yes um, if no are you using another cleaning schedule NA do you make sure you have a good supply of cleaning products? Yes, I make sure I have plenty of cloths and disinfectants. And I also use, um, what is it called? Is it the Flora? I'm gonna put it on the screen. Um, but I have like a bottle of 
that lovely smelling um, cleaning fluid. I always have that because it smells so nice. Um, this is just about um, cleaning as you go, which I do because I have like slight OCD and I just don't like mess. So um, I can be like in the middle of baking and as soon as something goes in the oven, I'm clearing away my surface and washing up. And then um, as soon as I start decorating, I'm trying to like get rid of as many things as I go and clean as I go so I have as much space as possible. I think it's partly because I don't have like an industrial kitchen where I just have loads of surfaces. I only have um, like one area of worktop so I need to make sure that I use the space well. Um, clean and clear as you go. It's recommended for keeping your kitchen clean as you work. How do you do this? So I just put I'll wash and disinfect surfaces and utensils after I've completed a stage of baking. Examples include after mixing ingredients and putting into trays um, and then in the oven um, as the space will be clear for food. Then I would clean again after making any icing and then again once finished. Then this is about food waste. So do you remove leftover food from plates before washing? Yes. Do you have a bin for food waste? Yes. Do you use strainers in your sinks? Yes. Um, do you have a specific place for food waste? Yes. And do you disinfect and clean this area regularly? Yes. Um, food bins collected weekly. Then this is just about a cleaning schedule. So this is an example which I made my own, which is in my spreadsheet video. Um, but you just put the item that you're cleaning, how often, what your precautions are, so whether you wear gloves or a mask or um, whatever you do, and then method of cleaning, so just a step by step. Then we're on to chilling. I don't think I have many for this section. Um, so for this one, I just put, uh, do you check regularly that these types of food are kept chilled? So it's anything that has a use by day or that says um, keep refrigerated. So like butters, for example. So I put yes. Um, how do you keep track of when food should be used by or thrown away? Um, packaged food stay used by on the labels. Cooked foods have a written label to detail allergens best before and when made. Open jars with use uh, with use with dates with use by dates. I think I meant. Um, have a label once open so like if I open it I say opened on the 20th of October and then I know that eight weeks from that date is when I need to get rid of it then I've just put do you follow the manufacturers instructions for using your fridge yes chilled display NA and then NA for chilled foods being displayed safely because it's not relevant um, so these are about thermometers and temperature checks. So I put that I have a fridge thermometer and then NA for the other one because I don't have a chilled display unit. These are again going through the details that you need to know. So you would know this from your level two food safety and hygiene about temperatures that things need to be kept at. So like your fridge temperature, your freezer temperature, etc. So it's just confirming that it needs to be kept at eight degrees or below and how long you should leave foods out the fridge for um, stuff like that so there's just loads more information there um, chilling down hot food this isn't relevant to me so I did not fill this out so it's just about like meats and then there's also defrosting which none of that was relevant to me either and then um, it's on about like ice crystals in meats um, I don't know anything about those so I can't help you with that um, but yeah it's got all the information on those and freezing foods again I don't freeze anything I don't freeze any cakes some people do I prefer not to um, so I haven't filled that out obviously if I decide to start freezing cakes then I might fill it out but at the moment I don't need to then we're on to cooking so this page is just through about um, cooking safely to kill bacteria. A lot of it is very meat based, so I'm just gonna brush over a lot of this. Um, these were all NA apart from the eggs one. Um, so it's about cooking eggs safely and making sure that they're cooked properly. So I, it just says list the dishes containing eggs that you prepare or cook. So I've put cakes, brownies, cupcakes, those are just examples. I 
generally mean any kind of bake. Um, do you cook eggs and food containing eggs thoroughly until they're steaming hot? So I put yes. And then all the others I put NA for rice, pulses, um, crabs, like crustaceans, fish. Don't use any of those. Then this is about reheating, which again isn't relevant to me. So if it is relevant to you, then make sure you fill that out. Um, then this um, acrylamide, this can be found in, what was it? There's one that I answered. Um, it says about when baking bread and savoury treats. So that's the only one that I answered. So potatoes, not relevant to me. Here, when it says when baking bread or sweet and savoury bakery products, cook until golden, um, yellow or lighter. Use the lowest oven temperature possible for the food. So most like cupcakes and things are 160 um, to 170, some are 180, um, but it's around that kind of margin. It's never, you know, like 250 and it's never under 100. Um, so yeah, it's just you tick yes if you do that so I put yes I do that and then where possible set a timer um, so again I do that so I ticked it then on this one this is about checking your menu it's a lot of meat so it's not relevant to me then on this next page it says about hot holding um, again not relevant I don't keep any foods in kind of hot containers um, it's more for like say your I don't know, dishing up at a um, restaurant or something and you have those hot trays and you dish up through that. You know, like some kind of bre breakfast bars have it where you have like beans and sausages and stuff in those hot bars. You have to temperature check them before you hand out the food. Um, this is about ready to eat food. So that's NA. And then when it says about following the manufacturer's instructions on how to dist to store food, so when it says on the back of the packet, um, keep refrigerated, yes, I follow that. So I just ticked yes. And then I put yes for when I'm preparing fruit and vegetables, you make sure you wash them um, and peel and trim where relevant. Um, mine is usually only ever fruit, um, if I use fruit. It's, you know, say I use strawberries or raspberries in a cake, that's the only thing, so you just wash them before. Um, then both of these I put NA because they weren't relevant. So it's about chilled storage for ready to eat food. So not relevant to me. This one is management. So a lot of this wasn't relevant. So it's just about your opening checks and your closing checks. So all I added to this was that I do temperature checks. That's it. So apart from that, they're all the same as all of these. Um, and a lot of people find that those are the typical checks you don't really need any others but obviously if you do then add them on then there's extra checks so deep clean how often weekly maintenance i haven't put anything in there because i haven't had a situation where i need maintenance yet so i don't know how often um then dishwasher remove internal parts and deep clean weekly you just remove like the filters wash them out clean them then um, check effectiveness of washing and report any problems monitored on daily washes so like if you unload the dishwasher and it's particularly dirty still then you know it's not working properly um, NA for temperature probe because I use a skewer not an actual temperature thermometer then pest control um, daily for all of those and then no additional checks this is just more information about Prove It and cooking and reheating, chilled storage, etc. This is about your thermometers and how to use them, checking your probe, looking after it. And then here we've got managing food allergen information. So I've put that, uh, where is it? So where do you keep allergen information for the foods you serve? So I put that I'm I label them on the item slash order so they have a little allergen sticker. Uh, do your staff know where to find accurate allergen information? NA, have you trained your staff? NA, how often do you review your staff training? NA, and then when do you update your labels? When items are bought, I check the labels for any changes. So, like, 
if I bought some new chocolate, I would check it and then I put a label on it if it's containing nuts or anything like that. Um, and anything that's gluten free that might not be obvious as gluten free. And so like Silver Spoon products are always gluten free. Um, but some of them aren't vegan, so it says to check, but they're always gluten free, it says on the website. So I put a little label because it's not exactly like it says on the front, gluten free sugar. So you might not be able to tell. So I always have that on the front. Um, for loose foods, where do you display allergen information for customers? So I put distant selling, notified at the time of order and on collection because they have the sticker next page so i put na for allergen content um on the menu because i don't have a menu um do you make any free from products yes do you make sure that they do not contain the allergen that they are free from yes they are the only order prepared at that time and the area is thoroughly cleaned um if you intend to use any precautionary allergen labeling do you complete a full risk assessment um no and na um because i don't like precautionarily do allergen labeling i say that it may contain um i think that's to do with if it doesn't come with a label so you don't know what ingredients are in it then you do a precautionary one um but i always make sure that they've always got ingredients on the label um deliveries um how do you ensure your allergen information is up to date check labels and online descriptions for details Takeaway orders label upon receipt of order. Customer confirms allergies in a written message so that they can't come back and say that I didn't check. I always get them to write it in a message. Then NA for staff training here. And takeaway orders labels again. A lot of it's repeated. Then these are just allergen lists that you can make. I created my own. You would have seen it in the last video if you watched about spreadsheets. It's in that one where I show you all the spreadsheets that I created for allergens. Uh, training and supervision is not relevant, so I didn't fill anything out for that. Customers, it's just telling you um, about how to understand complaints and how to solve that problem and what records you need to keep for it. I've never had any complaints, so I haven't had to do any of this. But yeah, it's just like a step by step on what you need to be doing. Suppliers and contractors, how to choose them, keeping a record of the food products. My suppliers are supermarkets, so I don't need to keep this kind of record. Um, and yeah, ordering online. So if it was like a buy in bulk kind of supplier, then I would probably write down more information because it's supermarket. Um, so as I was saying, the stock control is just keeping an eye on your stock, use by dates, how you store it, etc. Um, then there's product withdrawal and recall so like um, I see it sometimes on cake forums where someone says like I reported this product because my butter um, like went off in a couple of hours after I took it out the fridge for example so then they took it back to the store that they bought it from and then they might have to recall it if there's something wrong with it so then any bakes that you've made with that in you might have to then recall those from the customer so it's all details on those then there's um safer me method completion record so this you just tick off everything that you've done in the pack basically so i just wrote the dates signatures and then any ticks any that weren't relevant i just put na so it's just how much you've completed of this pack and then there is the diary i haven't done very much in this yet um this isn't this can be done after your inspection because obviously it's like a diary of your day to day. Um, whereas the other pack, the other main part of the pack is kind of like your processes. Um, obviously, if you can fill it out and it's relevant, then do. So again, it's just opening, closing checks. Staff training record is not relevant to me, so I didn't print this out. Then there's suppliers list. So you just fill out any details of any suppliers. Because it says like delivery days, any that, you know, like shops and things that you go to, I didn't write those down because it's not a supplier in a sense. Um, I don't get like regular deliveries, stuff like that. So I didn't include it. Then there's contact list. So um, I just have my health officer in here and that's it. 
um, because I haven't had any pest control or like maintenance people coming so I haven't needed to write their details in. There's a few pages for that. There's the cleaning schedule, I have my own so I don't use this one. Then there's prove it records, all I've got in here is one example, um, kind of just because I wanted to put something in there, I haven't actually done any others yet, is um, checking bakes are thoroughly cooked and then I just put that the you probe the cake or cupcake or whatever it is um, with a skewer and then if it comes out clean then it's done, if it doesn't come out clean then you leave it in for more time and then I've put in the date that I recorded that because yeah that's how I check that my bakes are done. Um, brownies are slightly different because you want them to be gooey so you just have to make sure that they've been cooked for the required amount of time. Um, mine are cooked for 25 minutes. Mine usually come out clean. Um, mine aren't like gooey to the point where you, like you would eat them hot. Um, whereas some people like them very gooey and like depending on the filling that can mean that when you put a skewer in it's not necessarily going to come out clean so you just need to make sure that it's cooked at the right temperature the right amount of time and then stored correctly afterwards and it will be fine um these are the logs that you keep again i haven't done these um because she didn't say that i needed to tick off that i've done the opening closing checks so I don't do these but obviously if I come into any problems I would because you record any issues you've had but I haven't had any issues then this is a full weekly review I filled this out so you've just you just tick out what you've done any details of any problems I haven't had any so I just put NA and then what you did about it um, and like any issues and if they happen more than three times then you clearly need to like look over your processes again if you if they don't happen more than three times then you might have a good plan in place. Then there's allergen information, has it been updated to reflect any menu changes? So yes, um, cleaning schedule requires updating. I put no because it's a good schedule. I don't need to change anything about it. Um, any extra opening and closing checks? I put yes because I added the temperature checks on there. So yeah, it's just any changes that you want to make. So yeah, that is the whole pack the whole 100 pages of that pack. I know that was really long. I'm hoping that it was useful for you guys because I see so many people, I probably should have said this at the start for all the people that actually made it this far, thank you. Um, and comment down below if you made it this far because I know it's a lot. Um, it took me about 15 minutes to fill out but it's taken other people longer which is why I wanted to do a video on it. Um, I've seen on like all the cake forums that I'm on that people are saying that they don't understand because it's not relevant and a lot of it isn't relevant um, and I think because people are panicking about what the inspector's going to say because they haven't filled it all out they're thinking I have to fill it all out but it's not relevant so that's why I wanted to go through this because I've had my inspection and I mean she didn't look through it in too much detail but she was impressed that I had it um, but at least I'm not working off of like nerves if that makes sense whereas obviously most of the people filling it out now are nervous about their inspection so that's why they're kind of panicking whereas I'm just here to tell you that a lot of it isn't relevant so many people know it's not relevant including the health officer that's why they quite a few of them have said that you don't need to do it but I still did because they know that quite a few bits of it aren't relevant if you don't have staff and if you're not in a commercial kitchen where you know like a restaurant so yeah, I'm hoping this was helpful and if it was then please like this video and let me know that it was helpful. If you've got any questions on inspections please let me know down below. If you want me to do a QA, and a I will um, because yeah I get quite a few questions on baking and I'm happy to answer them literally any hour of the day let me know. Um, so yeah and if you did like this video then please subscribe and there will be a lot more baking videos. I've got a whole list of ones that I need to film. Um, including a tour of my kitchen because I wanted to show you how I store my ingredients and my like thermometers in the fridge where I store my paperwork my um, like packaging like boxes and stuff how I store it and how I label um, ingredients with like allergen labels so I label them all individually with like contains nuts contains this contains that so I just wanted to show you all of that so that will be coming up soon 
and yeah there's quite a few baking related videos so yes stay tuned for those and I will see you in the next one bye <laughs>